Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today we're going to address a question from Mark Osborne. He wanted to know if I could do a video about Hydra, and that's what we're going to do. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what Hydra are, how they get into our aquariums, how that can be problematic, and some ways that they can be prevented and or treated. So what are Hydra? Well, Hydra are Cnidarians, and so they belong to the same group as corals, anemones, gorgonians, sea jellies, creatures like that. And basically they are a tube surrounded by tentacles. The tentacles contain specialized stinging cells that help them to subdue their prey. And it's those stinging cells that make them a problem in our aquariums. The stinging cells are used to capture prey like Daphnia or copepods or other small creatures, but they can also be deadly to small fish, especially fry, and to shrimplets. So let's talk a little bit about how hydra end up in our aquaria. There are a lot of different ideas on how this works, but I think one of the most common ways that they probably get into our aquaria are through hitchhiking on aquarium plants or other decor. It's possible that they could end up in a bag along with some fish from a, a pet store or something like that as well, but I think aquarium plants is probably the most common way they come in. They could also be introduced along with uh, live food that has been collected in the wild. For example, if you were to collect Daphnia in a lake or a pond, uh, it's very possible that the natural predator on Daphnia could be collected along with those Daphnia. And because uh, Hydra can reproduce asexually, you only need one to eventually have a big problem. So let's talk prevention first of Hydra. There are a couple of things that you can do. One is every time you introduce plants into your aquarium, it's a good idea to quarantine them first and possibly perform a dip. Now I'm going to put some links down to some ideas for how you can dip your plants to be able to help minimize the risk of introducing Hydra into your tank. So check out the description for those links. Another thing you can do is avoid collecting live foods in bodies of water that could have Hydra. And one good way to do that is to culture your own live foods. There are many, many methods out there for controlling Hydra or treating them. Uh, let's look at a few of those. There are mechanical methods, there are biological methods, and there are chemical methods. So when I say mechanical methods, basically I mean removal. Um, you can remove them by siphoning them out to some extent. They do tend to adhere to surfaces, uh, so you're not going to get all of them out, but you can at least reduce numbers that way. Uh, in many cases, it's not going to remove them all, though, like I said. Um, water changes can help. By doing water changes, you can remove some of the detritus that their food feeds on. Um, something else, this is not really removal per se, but one thing to think about is that hydra often end up in fry tanks because they like to eat the same food that fish fry do. So baby brine shrimp are excellent food for hydra. Microworms, same thing. Whenever I've found hydra in my tanks, and luckily it's been quite a few years since I have, but when I have, it's almost always been in tanks that receive microworms or baby brine shrimp or both uh, because those foods uh, are perfect for them. So keep in mind that um, fry tanks where you're feeding those kinds of foods can be particularly at risk. If there are hydra in the tank in small numbers, they're likely to increase in numbers quickly if you're feeding foods like that. Chemical controls, there are various ones. The first chemical control I ever used against uh, hydra, and I don't necessarily recommend it, but I, I've used it in the past with success, was just normal salt. Um, aquarium salt. I used that in a tank full of danio fry. I was having problems with the hydra killing some of the danio fry and I put um, a small amount of salt dissolved in the water and at first it didn't do anything. I increased the dosage a little bit and then I noticed the hydra shrinking down to little lumps but then they would appear after a day or two again. I dosed a little bit again and they eventually disappeared. And this was in a tank that had java fern in it, which is, and I believe java moss as well, which are both fairly resistant to some slightly brackish water. Unfortunately, this was so long ago, I can't actually tell you the doses. So, like I said, I don't necessarily recommend that method, but it worked for me. This was, you know, 15 years ago, something like that. Um, one of the most common chemicals used to treat hydra these days is fenbendazole, which is a chemical that's used for um, killing a variety of uh, parasites and things like that uh, in dogs and cats as well as in fish and other animals. So I'm going to put a link 
down in the description about um, some threads that have described the dosage of fenbendazole to treat hydra. Uh, one problem that Mark had is that in his setup he didn't want to use fenbendazole because it was not necessarily approved for use with food fish and he had an aquaponic system that he was dealing with. So in his case fenbendazole would actually not be a very good treatment even though it is very effective for many people. So that brings us to the biological methods of control of hydra. If you can find an organism that will eat the hydra, that can usually help solve your problem. Some types of snails will eat hydra. I used Limnea pond snails years ago to help control hydra with success. Um, they may be difficult to get for you or in your particular area. Um, some of the um, Spixi snail hybrids are supposed to eat hydra as well. So you can look into snails as a possible means of hydra control although the only species I've used personally is the Limnea pond snail but it like I said it seemed to work and then there are fish that will eat hydra many different species of gourami including the blue spot gourami and paradise fish are reputed to eat hydra I've never tried that particular method myself so you might want to do a little research on that if you want to consider trying that and uh, mollies are also said to be um, hydra predators so again I haven't used that method myself but if you're interested in researching that a little bit, it might be something that you could try. So I hope this has been a good overview of some of the uh, methods of dealing with Hydra, uh, both prevention and treatment. And if you have a method that you have used to control Hydra successfully, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I release videos every Friday all about aquarium and vivarium pets. I also do Q&A live strings approximately once a week. If you like this video, please feel free to rate it, to comment, to share it with someone who might enjoy it, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos.